podcast regarding the UK skill visa. And today's podcast is titled self Certify in the UK, your guide to skilled visa without a sponsor. Hello, Jilu, how are you? I'm very well, Jim, how are you? Well, fine, thank you. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Let's go straight to the questions. What does the term self-sponsorship refer to in the context of the UK work visas? Self-sponsorship refers to uh, the method by which a, uh, a, a company owner um, can, who is based abroad, can uh, use their own company to sponsor themselves via a home office sponsor's license. Okay. Is it possible for an individual to start a business in the UK and then have that business sponsor them for a skilled worker visa? Absolutely, Tim. Um, the immigrations, immigration rules allow for a uh, non-UK national to establish a UK company, uh, be uh, oh, 100%, uh, have 100% shareholding of that company, and then that company uh, can apply to the Home Office for a sponsor's license. And uh, then uh, once they get, get their sponsor's license, uh, they can assign uh, that license for the company owner to uh, to come to the UK in order to run uh, their uh, business. OK, for whom may self sponsorship be a particularly suitable option and why? OK, so self sponsorship would be suitable for really a broad range of uh, business people. Um, I mean, the usual cases you get is that someone who's been successful at their business in their own country who see a market niche in the UK branch out here. There are also um, startups and it uh, our experience has been with uh, more techie companies in, in the IT sector because, uh, you know, it's one of those uh, businesses where, which you can operate from anywhere in the world. Um, so, but uh, at the same time, it could be, it could be sort of like for anyone, really. I mean, uh, if you have a successful restaurant chain and you want to try the UK, uh, it can be suitable for, for them as well. I can't really see who it can't be. I could pose the question, uh, back, throw it back and say, it's a big, you know, who, who can it not be suitable for, you know? <laughs> so yeah, in, in most, uh, it's, it's suitable for most uh, businesses looking to uh, open shop here. Okay. What are some of the key advantages of choosing the self-sponsorship route for obtaining a UK visa? Okay. So the adv uh, if we are uh, talking about advantages, it's best to also bring into play the other route via which uh, business people uh, have been setting up businesses here, which is the innovators visa. So if you compare it to that, an innovators uh, visa is uh, granted to people who come with an innovative business idea, i.e. a business that doesn't really exist here, which is, as you know, is very difficult. It, uh, whereas with the self-sponsorship route, uh, you don't uh, need that. It could be almost any business. Um, you know, with the innovators visa, you, it needs to be endorsed by an endorsing body with self sponsorship. Um, you don't uh, need any endorsement from anyone. Innovators visa, usually there's a threshold of uh, 50,000 uh, pounds or above that you need to put in uh, the uh, business to start. Whereas with the self sponsorship uh, uh, route, you don't, there's no minimum threshold. So, it, it definitely has a lot of advantages, uh, compared, especially compared to the innovators uh, visa. OK, can you list the steps required for an individual to secure a skilled worker visa through self-sponsorship? OK, well, essentially there are three steps. Number one, you have to establish your UK company. So, you know, basically incorporating a company in the UK, and we all know that's quite straightforward. Um, once that uh, company is established, uh, you do, uh, in practical terms, you do actually need a, um, a UK-based director as you're not uh, based here 
to uh, deal with all the compliance and opening bank accounts and things like that. That uh, director could be your solicitor or your accountant or a, a trusted uh, friend. So once uh, that is done, then uh, then the company applies for a sponsor's license to the uh, home office. Once the sponsor's license um, is approved, uh, a, a certificate of sponsorship gets uh, assigned in your favour. And uh, then uh, you just apply uh, for a UK skilled visa. So it's a it's a it's a three step process. I would say, um, you know, the longest uh, part of it is uh, getting the sponsor's license, but uh, it could be achievable in about three or four months. A to Z. OK, what are the specific responsibilities of the authorizing officer in the self sponsorship visa application process? So the authorizing officer is the one uh, who is named on the uh, sponsors management sponsorship management system um, to operate uh, that system, uh, you know, and uh, they have certain obligations, obviously, to sort of like make sure that uh, anyone who's being sponsored is uh, a genuine, uh, clean person. It could be, you know, whether it's the owner of the company or anyone else to be able to um, come here and take up a genuine uh, position. Um, you know, if there's any regulatory re uh, 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 changes, for example, changes of address, if that person doesn't come to the UK in time, doesn't report for work, you know, those kind of duties uh, they're uh, uh, supposed to uh, to uh, report. And, uh, you know, be the uh, port of call between the company and uh, the home office. So sometimes, you know, the home office may want to visit the company for compliance purposes. So it is the uh, authorizing officer that they will liaise with. So it's a, quite an important role, I'd say. OK, are there any investment fund evidence requirements for those applying for a sponsor's license through self sponsorship? There is no minimum uh, investment uh, fund uh, stipulated. It depends on uh, the business. You just need to have a robust business plan. And within that plan, uh, obviously, you have to put down your financials. Uh, usually, you know, uh, the home office would want to know uh, uh, that you've got enough money there to be able to operate your business, pay all the bills and everything for at least for the first six months. Because, uh, you know, uh, with most businesses, as we all know, right, the, the, that timeline is critical because before a, uh, a business starts making any money. Okay. So, I mean, you know, the average that we say is, uh, again, depending on your uh, business, you know, uh, you, should, you should have about £50,000 available for that purpose. What documentation is needed to apply for a sponsor's license when self-sponsoring in the UK? OK, for the sponsorship uh, license, um, usually you need uh, f at least four uh, different documents, um, depending on uh, the uh, sort of business it is. So, for example, if it's in healthcare, you need uh, CQC registration uh, documents. In the food business, you need the uh, local uh, authorities' approval to operate as a food operator, right? So for those kind of businesses, uh, there's a one mandatory document that you will need. And uh, the other three or four could be from a range of uh, various other documents. So a bank statement, corporate bank statement uh, is very important. Uh, you need, if you're occupying premises, which you should be doing, you need a copy of your lease. You need uh, uh, VAT registration documents. You need um, uh, registration with the HMRC for PAYE. Um, you know, also acceptable are uh, things like uh, uh, annual audited accounts. So. <clears throat> So the uh, the five or six that I've listed, uh, the minimum you need is four. But the more you can put in, the better chance you have of getting your uh, license approved.
Sure. Yeah. How does the self-sponsorship route enable an individual to apply for settlement in the UK? OK, so it's like uh, what I discussed, what I said in my previous podcast. If you um, assign yourself through self-sponsorship a certificate, uh, a work permit stroke certificate of sponsorship for five years, and you lawfully run your business and pay your taxes and everything else for those five years, then at the end of the five years, you would be eligible to, you and your family would be eligible to apply for indefinite leave. Okay. What are the common challenges or pitfalls associated with self-sponsorship for a UK skilled visa? Um, how might one navigate them effectively? Well, I think the most uh, important challenge is to make sure that you get your business plan right. So, you know, seek professional advice there, right? And uh, uh, also the other challenge, uh, uh, which a lot of people don't usually get the right advice on, right? But the other thing is, right, it has to be, and I can't stress this enough, right, they, the Home Office will scrutinize, right? It, you can't just create this whole thing just to facilitate uh, you to come to the, it has to be a genuine business. And your role in the business has to be, uh, has to be vital for the, uh, for the survival, for the expansion of this business. So you have to prove that you are uh, absolutely required for this business, as opposed to someone else who could be locally recruited. I think this is this is the uh, biggest challenge. This is where you need the right professionals to uh, to get it right for you. Um, so that is the cha challenge, right? Pitfalls, you know. I mean, again, the same advice as before, right? You know, because you're you you'll be your own boss, right? You shouldn't. Uh, take your responsibilities lightly. Uh, you should always maintain, uh, uh, if you if you become the authorizing officer, the uh, SMS system. Well, you you know compliance uh, in conjunction with the accountants companies. Uh, you know all those. The onus is more on you because you know at the end of the day, uh, you are more likely to be audited, uh, not just by the tax authorities, but also by the Home Office. Uh, through the, through the lifeline of the company, okay. Okay, so um, many of our audiences have are consultants or consultancies, and um, with the self certification sponsor license, if they come here and self certify, can they also bring other consultants or sponsorships in the future in the UK? Absolutely, Tim. You know, it depends on their requirements. If they can, uh, if they can, uh, you know prove to the home office that they need another 10, 15, 20 more people to come, that they can't live recruit local, locally. Uh, you know, they can issue, uh, you know, more uh, sponsorships uh, to the people that they need. Uh, this is, uh, if I can add, that uh, this has probably been the best thing around. Uh, you know, those of your viewers, you know, uh, in businesses uh, looking to uh, move their businesses to the UK or branch out here. This is an amazing way to do this. Uh, and, you know, you are your own boss. You are your own sponsor. You you run everything A to Z. Right. And, uh, you know, and you can bring your whole team back from India or wherever. This is proving absolutely popular with um, IT people, especially sort of like freelancers who can uh, operate their businesses for, uh, and uh, practices from anywhere in the world. OK. OK. Thank you, Julie. So thank you for today. Is there anything else you'd like to add to the No, I think uh, I've uh, said everything. Um, you know, uh, I've, yeah, I've, 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 I've said anything. If your viewers have any further questions, please do forward the, those to me. I would be more than happy to answer them. Thank okay. you. Always thank a you so much. OK. Take Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.